guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I've got a really fantastic guest, Stephen Reef, and he's going to talk to us all about strategy, uh, corporate strategy, management consulting. He's got an MBA from the UVA Darden School of Business, and it's going to be a fascinating discussion about uh, corporate culture and, and the material around that. So Stephen, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, very excited. So thanks for having me on, Chris. Yeah. Uh, tell p- people about your story and your background and ha- what you do and we'll get started. Yeah, great. So, you know, my story, I guess I can start back. I'm born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I live in Dallas, Texas now. Uh, I miss the nature, the beauty of Oregon, uh, but I do not miss the rain. Um, and I started my career in corporate strategy uh, and management consulting. Uh, I did a brief stint in politics, so I can talk about working on a presidential campaign. And when we lost the election, I did not work in the White House. I went to business school uh, and worked in consulting and eventually went to go work in-house where I led corporate strategy. And I'm happy to unpack what is strategy. A strategy can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, and then through my experience of strategy, I realized it doesn't matter what your strategy is. If no one knows what it is, if employees don't know what it is, if board members don't know what it is, if investors don't know what it is, uh and if you know i know you have a doctor audience if your patients don't know what your treatment strategy is it really doesn't matter what your strategy is (laughs) and so then we added on you know corporate communications which is the mechanism to start telling the story of your strategy and so after that experience and seeing the magic of when you combine strategy and communication uh, i decided to start my own firm I, i say i created a firm that i wished had existed so we sit at the intersection of management consulting to help create the strategy and then PR firms and executive comms to help tell the story of the strategy. And there's very few firms that have kind of both of those uh, skill sets. Yeah. Interesting. So kind of break down like or just high level overview of uh, strategy, corporate strategy, um, how it applies to, um, you know, presidential campaigns um, and yeah. looking into that. Great. So strategy the definition of a strategy essay is just a fancy word for a plan. And I like to think of it as like, or, and or priorities. So when you think of the word strategy, think of plan, think of priorities. And I think you can put it in everyday life. Have you been, did you go on a vacation this summer, Chris? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you probably had a, a goal in mind. Like, do I need a rest interviewing all these boring podcasts, podcast guests, I'm just kidding, we're exciting, (laughs) is exhausting and I need to rest. And so you probably put together a plan or a strategy of like, I need to rest, therefore I'm gonna prioritize finding a beach vacation, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you have kids, you're like, I need a priority. My goal is to educate my kids. And so I'm putting a plan together to go to Europe. We're gonna go to all these different museums. And so really it depends on your objective. If your objective is to rest, you put together a plan for one thing. If your objective is to educate your kids, you put together a plan. And strategy is just the same thing. Uh, you have an objective and then you need to put a plan together. And then you need to stick to that plan and you need to execute it. Uh, so my wife and I, I'm a big believer that everybody is a strategist. If you're a doctor, you're a strategist. If you're entry level analyst, you're a strategist. Everyone needs to be able to put a plan together. Uh, so my wife and I have one for our family. You know, we have a three point strategy. We're both nerdy. She's an MBA as well. And we talk about our prior priorities for the year. How are we going to spend our time? Uh, what do we want to prioritize? Um, and then as companies do the same thing. We work, live in a world with very limited uh, resources. And so what are the what are the three to four things we want to focus on? And then strategy is very scalable. So if you want to focus on improving your customer experience, then you have three, three things in order to improve the customer experience. And then from there, there's three things. And so it can be very, uh, very scalable um, as well. So that's that's strategy kind of in a, in a nutshell. And what about this, this idea of uh, corporate communications? I've always been interested, uh, uh, you know, um, how they decide what messaging to use and the framework messaging. Uh, how do they, how does that work? Yeah. So it's a great, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think 
everything you communicate is a function of the strategy. So every press release I write, it's like, how is this little press release? How is this partnership? How is this product? How does that fit into the bigger picture of where the company is going? So, you know, when the CEO writes the you know, writes the press release or writes his quote, it's like, as part of our strategy to do X, we are excited to announce our partnership with Y. And so the corporate communications piece is really, you know, articulating how the CEO, how the company is executing uh, their strategy and building and growing and everyone's um, going to be happy. You know, if you look at the data in different studies, one of the perennial complaints of any executives is they don't communicate enough. And especially in this hybrid workforce environments, it's added a lot, a lot more curveballs into executive uh, communications. There's some study I think PwC did that's talked about how 90% of employees don't understand the company's strategy. And if the employees don't understand it, they're probably working on the wrong things. They not may not be bought in uh, to the future of the company. So that's kind of the interplay, if you will, between strategy and corporate communications. And then when you think about communications, you know, you think about internal audiences and then you think about external. And I think a lot of people, you know, it's been interesting. Somewhat of what I do is PR and people have this this mindset of like, oh, PR, that's kind of like a celebrity type of a thing. And that's like kind of slimy and kind of squishy. And I want to change the narrative and say, hey, it's actually about how can you authentically tell your story and uh, and just being more more proactive uh, about it as well. And it can actually be a tool to help increase, you know, company value. Um, and it's not just about, you know, making somebody uh, famous or being a publicist for Prince Harry or, or, or whatnot. Um, so I think people need to change their anchor point on, on PR, how, you know, it's a squishy thing over here. It's actually, it can, it can really complement the hard, hard numbers because if your business is cranking out good results, well, it's even better if those numbers are then tied to your strategy and what you're driving. Uh, as well. An interesting analogy, I believe analogies are the key to communication. And uh, so I think if, have you watched the show Survivor? Do you ever, do you remember that yeah. show? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. it's on for 40 seasons. I didn't know. I watched it growing yeah. up and then all of a sudden my friend's like, it's still on. And I was like, what? But it's a, it's a great example of both strategy and communications because each player needs to have a strategy, but if they don't communicate at the end to the journey, how their strategy got them to that seat, it doesn't matter, you know, what their strategy. So you really need, you really need both. Um, and you know, vice versa, if all you do is communicate, but then you don't, you didn't really have a plan. It's, it's going to be hard to put lipstick on a, on a pig, if you will. Yeah, that's a uh, really interesting. And we'll talk about PR, which you alluded to. Um, but how does management consultant, um, fit into the, this, uh, strategy communication and, you know, what can they do, um, kind of, uh, decipher that? Yeah. I think, you know, management consulting at the end of the day, consulting is you're hired to give advice and you're hired for your expertise. And so I think, and sometimes that outside perspective is really, really helpful. There's a phenomenal book called Range, which I encourage your listeners to get. It's by David Epstein. And uh, one specific example of that I love to show is they actually use like a research study to prove that objective opinions are very helpful. But they gave you know students a oil and gas company and said, come up with a strategy for the oil and gas company. And with one group, they only gave other oil and gas company benchmarks. Like with another group, they gave other energy benchmarks. And another group, they said, look at the strategy of Nike and McDonald's in an airline and the participants who looked at those seemingly random strategies that aren't related to oil and gas actually came up with the most interesting and innovative and successful strategy for the oil and gas company um, and so consultant you know they uh all they do is bring objective advice and and hopefully bring uh some level of uh, expertise i uh to bring it to i know your 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 physician background i heard one uh one consultant described himself like, well, if you're having heart surgery, you know, you, you need the best heart surgeon in America uh, to do it. And I was like, maybe, but like, there's a lot of heart surgeons that can perform heart surgery. Like, I think I would be okay with, he was kind of making the case of like, you always need the best. And it's like, I think there's actually a lot of heart surgeons that could do it. But uh, so I can make fun of the industry a little bit um, as well, even though I'm, I'm part of it. Interesting. And, um, uh Talking about PR, um, you have um, this idea of board level PR strategy and top PR priorities on where to play and how to win. Um, I'm just curious to get more insight into the, you know, the PR. When we talk about where to play and how to win, I think that's that's part of the strategy and part of the PR too, because every strategy is like, what, what markets are you going to play in? 
what industry are you going to play in? What services are you going to play in? And then how are you going to win? You know, I've sat next to a lot of CEOs who are asked questions by investors and it's all, how are you different? How are you better? And so when you're thinking about the company level strategy, you need to answer those questions of how are you going to win? Um, how are you better than the competition? And the same thing with the PR world. Like it's a very noisy world. There's a lot of journalists. It's tough to be a journalist. I want to start a journalist support group because they're like tasked with writing one of the two articles per day. Um, and it's a tough, it's a tough life. And um, all that to say is that, um, anyways, I forget where I was, <laughs> it was going, but you want to make their, make their lives easier. And they're trying to figure out how they can win uh, and stand out kind of in this, in this noisy world um, that we're in. And so I almost have like the Jerry Maguire, help me help you. <laughs> uh, if you're writing a story, how can I help provide content? Um, and it's not, you know, I think the old way of PR was to say, Hey, look at me, I'm special. And like, no one cares. I mentioned Prince Harry before. Like if, People actually care about Prince Harry. All he has to do is wake up in the morning and people cover it. But for the rest of us, like no one really cares about Steven. Like my mom does, I guess. Uh, but the, what they do care and why I'm on the show is, right, you, you, you're you interested in the insights that I have that point to the bigger picture that can. Um, and so it's, it's the same way with the PR world in the sense of like PR firms don't care about specific companies, but they care about how your company is indicative of broader of broader trends. And that's where I think people need to change their um, perception of like, Hey, people aren't going to cover you just because like you think you're interesting. They're going to cover you if you can have a helpful insight to the broader macro trends of how the world is, uh, how the world's changing. So that's how I advise my clients. It's just like, I can't say like, it's hard to sell you, but like, let's, let's come up with ideas on like where your thought leadership is. And then let's press into that. Yeah. I've always been fascinated with just with this, uh, this area the, you talk, you also have this, um, section on where you talk about reporting and metrics and kind of, uh, kind of decipher that for us. Yeah. I think part of that's again, me wanting to change the narrative of PR. You know, I think a lot of people think of it as a soft skill and I think it can be, be the hard skills. Um, you know, PR firms should not run away from numbers. They should embrace them and they should embrace them twofold. They should embrace them on what are the numbers the story is telling for the company. And then they should be not afraid to report and use metrics on, on their own performance and, and how they're performing. I've you know actually read a book and I love the saying is like numbers are narrative, you know, numbers are telling a story. Um, as well, every PR firms traditionally, you know, are more poet, you know, I talk about Arvo is combining the poets and the quants. Um, so I think numbers are an important part of, of the storytelling puzzle, uh, if you will, especially for CEOs. So, um, yeah, and I've seen it some too with, you know, my daughter's had some health issues lately. So we spent a lot of time in the hospital, uh, and I know, you know, you're a doctor, uh, and so they're looking over her numbers, right. And there's, they're literally printing it out on the piece of paper. And then they're telling us the story of, of the numbers. And it's a, you know, different example, but it's, it's just another way of like articulating and kind of looking for examples in your everyday life, whether it's vacations or, or as you're treating patients, um, you know, it's like the numbers are telling you something, her hemoglobin levels are something. And, and what is the trend? How are they going? It's the same thing for doctors. It's the same thing for CEOs. Um, and so that's like, I guess another way I would try to, you know, uh, speak to your constituents and your, your background a little bit. Yeah, interesting. And, you know, earlier on in your bio, you were talking about how you worked on a uh, presidential campaign. I'm sure that was quite a really interesting experience. You know, you get to mm -hmm. learn, uh, you know, all this uh, campaign finance strategy, communications. And mm -hmm. then um, if, uh, if someone's interested in management consulting, uh, does an MBA help or, um, you know, what kind of early yeah. training? Like, tell, me, tell me more. MBA is very helpful to transition into consulting. It's they're notoriously hard. It's hard to get jobs in management consulting. Uh, and then for the top MBA programs, all the consulting firms come to you, which is which is really great. So if your goal is to transition into management consulting, I do recommend uh, going to an MBA program, not just anyone. You have to like do your due diligence uh, and make sure that those consulting firms that you want to work for are coming to campus. Uh, but it can be one of the best pipelines, um, yeah, to enter a consulting industry. Yeah. And they're recruited. The consulting firms are recruiting more MDs recently, uh, too. So yeah. uh, <laughs> some of them are liking the more you know diverse backgrounds. Yeah, you know, a couple of my 
physician colleagues, they, they're working for uh, Deloitte and um, okay. Bain and, you know, yeah. how can people contact you, follow you, you know, check out your work, reach out to you? Thanks. Yep. Uh, website Arvo. Arvo is the name of my firm. I'm a big fan of Viore, the clothing company. Uh, <laughs> and I read an article about them, about how they looked to Scandinavian languages uh, to find their name. So um, it means valuation. Arvo means value or valuation, because uh, that's at the end of the day, like strategy plus story equals your valuation. So that's the name of my firm. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn uh, as well. Stephen uh, Reif, R E. Yeah. And for all the audience out there, let's thank Stephen for uh, coming out to the show, um, really providing insights into a really interesting uh, sector and industry and all of his resources will be in the links and show notes. And thanks so much for coming out to the podcast. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week